We Will Rock You, which arguably is maybe like, I mean, I have a two year old that we do that kind of on our, you know, with stomping our foot and clapping our hands. Boom, boom, bap. Arguably yeah. one of the first drum beats you'll ever learn. Obviously, may, well, let's say maybe it's the second drum beat you'll ever learn. I think we all know the first one. But what you said here is it seems that a drum beat and something else needs to be added before the piece is considered songwriting. So you're adding on that boom, boom, shh. even then you're using the big stadium and the stomping that they're doing. But it's the mixture of those things that that makes it songwriting, which then ergo songwriting is copyrightable well and that's and that's a, that's a good a great point i mean that's the question i guess can you yeah can you differentiate just your standard you know four on the floor beat versus when the levy breaks well i mean you're right at the end of the day we don't want every drum beat to be copyrighted because then you're, people would stop making music because they'd be worried they'd get sued and there'd be no new ideas left out there um, yeah. except create, except crazy, you know, jazz, you know, seven, four sure. signature yeah. t- beats, whatever, yeah. um, stuff that people can't dance to, you yeah. know, um, yeah. but, but it's a good question though, because I would say, you know, you can't, co- you can't copyright just like G C D on the guitar, mm-hmm. you know, like the, but if you do that with a bunch of other chords and then sing a melody to it, you can copyright it, right? It's all of a sudden it becomes, well, Whatever, there's so many songs. Yeah, yeah that I progression, and, and maybe that sort of hints at or hits at the um, the nature of drumming. I mean, like we're often, you know, aside from the occasional drum solo, I mean, drummers are often, you know, accompanying uh, other instruments, right? Yeah. And um, so maybe that's why, that, like, maybe it makes sense, right? If yeah, just going stomp, stomp, clap, like, is that songwriting or is that like? If so, then like the original caveman that did that, <laughs> we have to track yeah. track him down. Find his family. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who is it? Who is it? It's probably like John Bond. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that you know, would like be that would make great sense. ancestor. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, then we add something, and even you're right. Even if it was like in in the verse where Fred Freddie started doing like that, na 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 na, you know, like if you had the same beat and then a different singer, you know, obviously and doing different lyrics, but with that same sort of intonation. Um, I think that'd be like, okay, this is a ripoff and therefore that's plagiarism, but yeah, just the beat itself would not be. So it's, um, I find it so fascinating, especially at, I'm not a big hip hop guy. I'm re- very not, I'm not really a big pop guy. I'm, I'm a rock and roller, sure. but I see, I see in, you know, pop and hip hop just, just rule the, the music biz these days. And I see that as, as a lawyer, um, in those genres, like there's so much ripping off of uh, other songs and you know so i think there's gonna be more and more of these sort of questions brought up is what and then again when it comes to the beat too it's so intriguing because obviously in those two genres the beat is so important right um so like can you take the beat from another hip-hop song and then just kind of add your own hip-hop uh you know rapping over it or you know is that is that allowed or what and i I think we're going to see more and more of those questions and more and more of those um those plagiarism cases coming up yeah the whole thing i just keep thinking like man it's such a sticky situation and then you don't want to you don't want to like inhibit other people from creating but i I think there needs to be a clear no one i think ever thinks it's right for someone to like sample the um like let's say the we will rock you beat and then like that exact recording um and put other music over top of it because that's just not that's really the, I guess, you know, like you said earlier, that's copyrightable like that. And I'm sure you know this obviously much better than me. What is like, so how does that work? Isn't it like a mechanical license? If you want to use that, what is that kind of stuff where if you did want to use it and you wanted to pay a lot of money, you can basically get their permission and pay for it. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't be a mechanical, like, so a mechanical, um, for example, my band covered uh, psycho killer by the talking heads. Um, we sort of did our own take on it, you know, we just threw it. I, I just thought it'd be a cool song to cover, especially with like sort of an updated yeah. view on it, like more of a hard rock view instead of like a talking heads view on it. So, um, and then it became like our most listened to song on Spotify. <laughs> so we sort of did it on a whim, but, um, so for that, for example, see that that's where we got a mechanical license. So you just have to go through the, the processes to get a mechanical license, which basically means that 
when we sell that cover song on iTunes, let's say we sell it for 99 cents, um, nine cents goes to the writers of it, which is the talking head. So David Byrne and hmm. uh, Tina, uh, yeah, whatever, yeah. The, three, the three main writers sure. from talking head. So, so that's a mechanical. Um, but as far as a sample, I mean, if you're actually sampling a song, so I had this, this other client release a song that had a sample of a uh, sort of obscure Paul Simon uh, song, which is cool because I'm a huge Paul mm-hmm. Simon fan. And uh, so it was kind of cool. The client's like, I've got the song. I want to sample this little loop from Paul Simon. How do I do it? And so I'd reached out to Paul Simon's like publishing company. And it's like, it's called like Paul Simon Publishing in New York City. <laughs> and I got a hold of the lady and she's like, hey, she's like super friendly. And she's like, yeah. Uh, and I was like chatting with her. I was like, do you know Paul? He's, she's like, yeah, he comes in every couple of weeks. <laughs> Just to, he lives nearby and he comes in and like asks what's happening with his catalog <laughs> and stuff, which I thought was just pretty badass that, you know, she actually knew Paul. Yeah. And then, and then we, so we basically go, we had to go through that process. And when it comes to that, I mean, you can, you have to get approval. So in this situation, we, we played her and I guess in theory, she played to him the sample. And um, a lot of times it just goes to the publisher mm-hmm. and the publisher decides if they want to, but, um, and yeah, they ended up approving it. And so then we had to negotiate a fee for that. And then, and then maybe on that new song, if, if the sample is sort of an integral part of the new song, which in hip hop, I mean, sometimes these samples are so, they're a huge part of this, the new song then you negotiate how much songwriting goes to, in this case, Paul Simon. Yeah. Right. So, so then all of a sudden you're like, you know, I think of all these, um, these new songs that like are using old, old tracks, you know, and old songwriting. It's such a, it's such a windfall for these old artists, right? If they've, you know, if that Paul Simon song became a massive, or the new one became a massive hit, then all of a sudden he just gets this windfall of money, which without having to do anything. Right. Yeah. Um, Pretty nice. So yeah. So the, yeah, so that's how that worked in terms of like a sort of a sample situation. <laughs> 